Hey there YouTube, Patty Cake here with a tutorial on how to terminate a Cat5 or Cat6 cable. Uh, first off, let's take a look. I've got a couple samples here. Uh, this is a prefabricated cable. You can kind of see how uh, the termination is done. Pretty nice. Um, typical thing, store-bought. It's good for 6 foot, 10 foot, 12 foot. But when you need a cable a certain length, sometimes you got to buy a bulk and terminate it yourself. Um, here's an example of some of the things you will find. Self-terminated. An example of what not to do. The insulation isn't even crimped into the connector. Uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. I'm going to demonstrate how to change this out. Uh, something like this would be what actually causes it to pull loose. So this is a Cat5 cable. Uh, Cat6 cable is a little bit thicker insulation. Uh, I believe the wires inside might be a little bit heavier gauge. Um, and uh, so we'll go from there. A uh, little, little look at the tools and what we've got here. You don't necessarily need all of this, but I just want to show you some different options. Uh, these are electrician shears. Uh, I like these a lot. I use them uh, a lot. Just some flush cuts. Uh, they're angled off and they're completely flush. There's no bevel to this side. So when they cut, it would be flat exactly where I want it. It's just a rounded off uh, tools. Good for cutting bulk cable, but I also find it good for stripping insulation. And these, of course, are our uh, crimpers that we'll use on the RJ45 connector. This has an 8-pin and a 4-pin, so you could use it for what you think of as a telephone um, connector. Looking at the connector types, you've got a... R these are RJ45. They're 8-pin. Uh, this is... And when they're clear like this, it's showing you that it's for a not shielded cable. When they're like this and they have the metallic piece, that's a shielded cable. That's another tutorial, but just for you to see what they look like. And I like to use uh, the booties here, so it looks more like a professionally done store-bought cable. You can get them in assorted colors, uh, and you get them for whether it's a Cat5 or a Cat6. So this being a Cat5, I don't know if you can see the size of the opening there, where a Cat6 is a little larger diameter to allow for the larger insulation and cable. Uh, since our cable is black, I'll use the black booties today. So first I'm just going to cut these clean. We'll throw that away. As you look at the cable, we want to break the insulation. Really all you have to do is score it with an edge. I like to use the scissors, go around just lightly. And then you can bend and peel. Well, this is a bit more rubber. Uh, if you've got a plenum cable, which means it's fire rated for plenum sealing with uh, sealing tiles that have return air, uh, those tend to just score them and break apart. So there you see, scored it. And inside you've got four pairs of wires. Uh, orange, green, blue, and brown. This is the way I always separate mine. I move my orange to this side, brown to this side, and green and blue up or down depending on where they are in the match. So this is actually a striped orange and an orange, striped blue and blue, Stripe green and green, stripe brown and brown. So first we want to untangle all of those in pairs. It's usually about this time that I realize, hey, I didn't put that rubber boot on. I'm going to need that because that's got to go on before you put the connector in place. So I'll go ahead and pull all those together and slide my rubber boot on.
It'll fit right over the installation. I'll just pull it down out of the way. So back to my pairs. So the key here is the order of the wires inside. So I'm going to go stripe it orange, orange, stripe green, blue, stripe it blue, green, stripe brown, brown. Now this is considered a B configuration. Again, stripe it orange, orange, stripe green, blue, stripe blue, green, stripe brown, brown. Uh, this is the most common one used out in the industry and in the field. There is an A configuration, and to do that, you would just take the greens, put them where the orange are, and put the orange where the green. You swap those, and you've got an A configuration. So what I like to do is, see, I've got those, and I pull out the bins from where they were twisted together, and then I hold them in place and line them all up. And you want to do multiple checks to make sure that nothing has crossed over. So I still have my stripe orange, orange, stripe green, blue, stripe blue, green, stripe brown, brown. And I'm going to cut them off straight. Okay, so I've got this straight line of wires. Now I'm going to show you two type of connectors here. Okay, this first type of connector, um, you put your wires in and they will bottom out. That's it. They stop right at the end of the connector and uh, don't go anything any farther than that. When you're using this type of connector, you've got to cut the wires exactly at the length you need, which is generally about the width of a fingernail. That's a good gauge. So I'd go to the edge of my insulation and my fingernail and I'd be cutting it off about here. I'm going to show you something that's a little easier. Uh, it's this. It's called a pass-through connector. So I'm going to check my wires, make sure that they are again in the right order. And I put it where I can see the metallic crimp devices up towards me. And I'm going to slide them through. And again, I'm going to check my order. Stripe it orange, orange. Stripe green, blue. Stripe it blue, green. Stripe it brown, brown. And I can see that they did not cross over. They are in the correct order. Now, remember I talked earlier about the insulation. Right here at the RJ45 is what's going to press down and crimp the cable. You want to make sure that this is going to get the insulation of the cable. It's designed for the diameter of the cable, including insulation, to hold it in place and keep this piece from pulling off. Now, because this is a pass-through, if I just uh, cut these off, I'm going to have a piece of the wire sticking out. If I cut them off, they'll be sticking out and it'll get in the way of this actually clipping in. They make a separate, a different type of crimp tool that is designed for these that will cut these off flush but over the years you don't always have the right one so I've learned to do it a different way and that's where my flush cuts come in I'll push this down as far as it can go and I'll cut use the flush cut to cut it as tight to the connector as possible like so and if you can see that closely you see little bits of the wire sticking out and that's where I will pull this forward just a hair like that to get them back into the connector and I'll hold it in place while I bring my crimp tool in the 8 pin section crimp I always go twice with the crimp alright and you'll see that that is on there pretty snug my wires are all good and I will again just double check the order you can see them through the connector with the clear connector 
Um, and another little thing I like to do, you've got the tab that actually holds it in place when you put it in the socket. I like to pull it out just a little bit before I tuck it in the boot. That helps it clip better as it goes in. So I can slide my boot up, put it around the connector, tuck that in place. Now I've got what looks like pretty close to a prefabricated connector. Slightly different, but very nice, professional looking. As compared to what I started with, something like this. Definitely not nice, not going to last long. The booties protect the cable from being pulled out, extreme angles, and uh, that kind of thing. So I hope this is helpful to you. Uh, I'm going to have more tutorials up. Uh, I'll do a shielded cable and some other things. But thank you for watching. Again, this is Patty Cake on YouTube.